All right. Well, thank you, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Um, my name is Adriana. Um, I'm the health promotion coordinator at the health department here, uh, and Mary Beth's here too um, from the UGA Rockdale Extension. So she'll talk a little bit more in a second. But we're really excited to kick off the new year with New Year, New You, healthy habits that stick. So you know, it's January. Uh, you know, the New Year's resolutions have already kind of started up a little bit, and you know, they may or may not, you know more power to you, but they might be winding down a little bit, you know, they kind of ease off. So, you know, we are going to get you back on track or, you know, if you haven't made a goal, maybe we'll start one. We'll see. <laughs> okay. So real fast, uh, we can, um, you know, you can raise your hands. Um, you can raise your hands just kind of if you you know, hit those little three dots, you can kind of just, you know, um, you know, show um, there are some reactions at the bottom too, you know, so maybe do like a cute little thumbs up, but there, um, we're just going to take a quick poll, right? So how many of you have made New Year's resolutions before? So I certainly have. I see Graciela, Stephanie, Lee shaking her head, Melissa, Leslie. Yes. So how about for 2020? Have you made one for 2020? And that should have said 2021, but either one. <laughs> ah, see, we're all stuck in this time warp thing. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, yes, so have you made one for 2021? See, I didn't even catch it. Yes. Um, we've got a couple people who've made some. How about regularly? Have you, do you regularly set, you know, goals, you know, whether that be New Year's resolutions, monthly goals, weekly goals? Melissa says, yes, yes, she regularly sets goals. That's okay. You know, I understand it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, and then do you feel like there's a difference between goals and, and resolutions? So, you know, if you do, you can do a little thumbs up. If you don't, you can do a little, you know, open mouth, like, oh, there's no difference. A couple thumbs ups, yeses, yeah. You know, so we're gonna talk about that. Um, yes, we've got some yeses in the chat, you know, some try to, um, so that's completely, I, I understand. So no, there's no difference. So today we're gonna kind of get into that, right? So real fast, if you're willing to share, you can either unmute yourself or put them in the chat. You can tell us, you know, one of your, goals or New Year's resolutions. So we'll give you a couple of minutes to put that down. We're excited to hear them. You know, nothing's too funny, too embarrassing. You know, we are all, you know, here to grow together. Um, so Mary Beth, if you want to cue that music, we'll get started. Okay, we've got one in the chat. So a dry January, of course, and also lose weight. Yes, I understand. Great reset um, to do a dry January. Awesome, awesome. I've always heard a lot of people, I've never heard dry January, I've heard dry February. I, I don't know, maybe I hang out with different people, <laughs> um, but I think that's great. Um, I always keep goals for eating. Other goals are to get more exercise. Awesome, awesome, Leslie. We might ask you some more questions on that one. That's great. Uh, Lee has, I try to stick to my resolutions permanently. Previous ones are to be more punctual. Yes, that's good. <laughs> Me too. Uh, to kiss my husband more. And this year is less is more. I love that. I love that. So that's a really great one. You know, these are all things that are, you know, what oftentimes we think about goals and resolutions is, you know, things like weight or, you know, you know, spending money, things like that. So this is awesome. Awesome to have different ideas of goals. Um, I really enjoy that. Thank you. Yeah. So when we talk, oh, managing my time tasks, how much time I spend on social media. Yes. Yep. That's mine actually this year. So I understand, <laughs> um, spending more time with my family and on hobbies. I love this, um, grow my business and help others stay accountable to their health goals. That's really great. It's always good to have an accountability buddy. So I love that. 
um, to eat more than once a day. Oh no, Melissa, you must be very busy. <laughs> um, to eat more than once a day and to sleep longer than two hours a night. Oh goodness, that's a tough one. That is definitely a tough one, but I'm super excited that you know you you have some ideas of what you want and that is very specific too, right? To sleep longer than something. So there we go, good. Um, if anybody has any more, you're doing well so far, awesome. I like it, I like it. Um, throughout this, if anybody has new ideas, um, you know, around um, goals and resolutions, please feel free to put them in the chat, shout them out, we'll figure it out together. All right, so a little bit of background stuff on uh, New Year's resolutions. About 40% of Americans make New Year's resolutions. Um, however, out of that 40%, only 40 of them, 40 to 44, are you know really successful after six months. And oftentimes, sometimes it kind of pitters out, you know, um, if you happen to you know go in you know previous 2019, way back when go to the gym, you know, and you start to see everybody there in like January and it kind of pitters out by the end of January, pitters out a little bit more by March. But overarchingly, people who set resolutions, who set goals, tend to have way more success at changing behaviors. So 90% of successful people set goals. And the majority of people who feel like they have failed in something did not set goals. So about 90% of those people. So even setting a goal and failing at that goal, or, you know, maybe only reaching it halfway or 30% or even a little bit, you know, having that goal in mind already kind of sets you up to get you on the right track. So this is a really great quote that Mary Beth found from Dr. Jenna Andings from um, Texas A&M Extension, that three reasons that people do not keep their New Year's resolutions are that one, the, real, the resolution isn't realistic. Two, a person expects an unrealistic benefit um, from that desired resolution. Or three, the person wasn't prepared to make the change. So I'm certainly, I think we've all had unrealistic ideas of New Year's resolutions. We might write a resolution to, I don't know, have a six pack by next month and that's not gonna happen. <laughs> um, so it all sounds true, definitely, definitely. So making sure, you know, that those real, those, we're going to try our very best now to, you know, change those resolutions so we can make them stick. Um, they're also not always specific, right? So oftentimes it's things like, oh, I'm going to get healthy this year. I'm going to get fit this year. I'm going to save some money this year, be better with my money. Um, but that doesn't really tell you what you're going to do with that money. It doesn't tell you how you're going to get healthy. So we haven't really thought through, sat down for, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever that looks like, and thought through contingency plans, you know, obstacles and ways that we're going to get through that. So you don't have to budget any more time to do it. We're going to do it today. <laughs> um, so I'm really super excited, you know, um, but it's hard. It's really hard. So we're also going to try to focus on day-to-day -day behaviors and habit formation instead of overarching, I'm going to have this big thing change in my life. So, you know, focus on the day-to-day -day things that we have the opportunity to change. So when we're talking about goals and, and resolutions and things like that, we love looking at something called SMART goals. Um, it's huge, huge, huge in the health world, public health world, even in the business world. Um, you know, if you might have taken, you know, some um, public administration classes, um, things like that, we talk about SMART goals. So SMART goals are specific, so direct, detailed, manageable, you know, things that you know what that means. Measurable, so you kind of have a gauge. So it's not just, I'm going to lose weight, you know, if we're going to talk about losing weight, you know, but it's something that's quantifiable or like a yes or no thing that you can tell is happening. Um, attainable. So it's something that's real. <laughs> it's not something, you know, that like I'm going to get a six pack next week or I'm going to be a millionaire by the end of the year. You know, even though I love that and that might be on my dream board, that's not going to be in my smart goals. Um, so it's realistic. And then you also have to make sure that you have those tools to be able to attain it. And so we're going to talk about some tools in your tool belt, uh, belt later on. Relevant is the R, so um, it has to, you know, align with you, with your organization, with 
whoever you're making these goals for, you know, it has to mean something to you, not just because you like saw it one time on, you know, Oprah or Ellen and you're like, okay, I'm going to do that. It's got to really, really uh, resonate with you. And then time-based. So it's either a deadline or something that you know how often you're going to get it done. So we love a SMART goal. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, making some SMART goals later on. So, all right. I don't know if you guys came prepared with a piece of paper and a pen. <laughs> you don't have to today, but you know, you, you can, you know, have a mental list. You can pull out your phone, whatever works. So making a list of, you know, maybe three behavior changes that you want to change, right? So maybe eating better, saving money, exercise more. I saw a lot of, you know, hobbies. Um, people wanted to try more hobbies, you know, focus on them. So maybe that's, you know, a behavior change. And then we're going to choose one of those behaviors to focus on. And then we're going to make a specific goal based on that behavior. Um, and then go back through later on and do the rest of your goals. And then we want to make sure we throw it back to those SMART goals, realistic and attainable, because we don't want to set ourselves up for failure. We want to do the best, best, best that we possibly can. All right. So when we have a big goal, um, and I saw some awesome, awesome big goals, right? Um, but maybe if, you know, we want to say something, you know, too big, right? We don't want to go too, too big. We want to go big, but we don't want to go too big. So if you have a goal that says, I'm going to run a marathon this year, maybe that might be a little too big if you're not a regular runner. If you already run, awesome. Maybe this is perfect. It's attainable for you. But maybe we're going to make a more realistic goal. So walking three to five minutes per week. Or, you know, if that's, you know, something, you know, maybe take a baby step from there. So then I want to run in a 5K six months after I start, you know, then maybe go to a 10K. So maybe next year, 2022, ah, that sounds funny to say out loud. <laughs> Um, 2022, think about that 10K, 2023, or maybe 2022 and, you know, next, you know, in the, in the summer, maybe think about, you know, a half marathon if that's what you want to do. So, you know, take those baby steps, right? Break it down into chunks and then think about, you know, what you want to do and how to make that goal go the distance. Okay, so let's practice. Let's get some stuff in the chat. So um, when we have some awesome, 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 you know, goals here, right? So um, here, let's just, for example, I will get fit. Instead of doing, I will get fit for, you know, your New Year's resolution, maybe try something that's specific, that's measurable, and that's realistic, right? So three days a week, I will go on a walk for at least 15 minutes after work. Instead of maybe lose weight, Maybe try, I will cook dinner three days a week, making sure to use two vegetables. Or instead of my goal <laughs> to stress less, I will stress less, maybe change that to, I will meditate for five minutes in the morning after my shower. So um, if we've got some awesome goals here, so we can take a couple of minutes, a um, couple of minutes here, you know, to say, make some of those goals a little bit more smart, right? So, you know, goals around eating, goals around exercise, um, goals around some of those hobbies. Also, I really want to find those hobbies that you guys are finding. I would love that. <laughs> um, always need a new hobby. Um, but, you know, what, what that could look like. So if you want to take some time, put some in the chat, and then we'll give you some examples too. And I think it's important to note that like you are, you're feeding up to that behavior with like small goals that help you actually reach that major change. And like, I really liked the marathon example because I know people like me, potentially you see these people running and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. That's so impressive. Whereas if I start running and I feel comfortable with a 5k and I do a 10k, that means I can run for an hour straight and I can either be really excited about that or say, you know what? that's plenty fit. I have no need to run four times as long as that, just to say that I did, like I, I achieved what I wanted to achieve. And so that can kind of, um, it can shift what your motivations are over time. But as you progress toward bigger goals, maybe you do still want to run a marathon or something like that. 
you have, um, you just feel successful and those positive feelings can help you reach that next rung on the ladder. So that's why we really like to focus on breaking stuff down. I love it. I love chunking things, um, breaking things in a little bitty pieces, super duper great. All right, so, okay, here we go. So, make less is more means declutter. Okay, so I can stop accumulating things, donate every, donate every charity drive, and three, I have stuff that's valuable. I'm a Disney collector. There we go. So uh, that I don't want to give away. And if that's something that brings you joy, joy, you definitely don't have to. So, you know, um, but you also don't want to have a garage sale advice. Okay, great. So we can talk about, you know, if you know what you want to do, so you know, you know, you don't want to start, you don't want to keep accumulating things. So you know, maybe making sure that, um, you know, as a, as a goal, maybe write down the things that you really want. And then if that's something that, you know, and that you keep in your wallet. So that way, if you go to purchase something, maybe you have that already there. Um, you know, baby steps, right? Little baby steps. Um, I already have set goals. Okay, so this is great. Um, so riding my bike from uh, to and from Old Town three times a week and adding on more distance as I get stronger. That's great. So not, you know, so making sure you're giving your body time. Um, that's really, really good. Working on my green horse three times a week. Okay, good. Um, I'm working on my first cookbook for healthier eating made uh, with simple ingredients that are easy to find. Awesome. I'm also creating a cookbook for college students being on a budget. Yes, we need that. We, yes, definitely budget. <laughs> um, I'll be 50 in April. So I, um, and I've set a goal weight. Okay, good, Gail. Um, my husband and I have set some goals for ourselves. We do some sort of exercise for at least 30 minutes a day and dinner is finished by 8 p.m. Awesome, downtown, 8 to 10 p.m. Oh, down, downtime, I think. So read, watch TV. Last week you did three hit sessions and walked five miles and you feel better. Accountability is key. Looking forward to getting back to doing 5Ks and you're already seeing hard work. That's awesome, 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 awesome. That's good, Gail, to make sure, you know, you've got a long-term goal and you've got a short-term goal of how to, you know, how to make, you know, reach that long-term goal. So that's great. Um, I plan to stay accountable to this goal by creating at least three recipes every week for your cookbook. I love that. All right. And you know, you're meal prepping on Sundays for the week. That's a great goal. Awesome. Monitoring my fast food consumption and trying to do more clean eating, which will hopefully lead to weight loss. That is great, great, great. Definitely. And I think that to make that goal even more achievable, I think Mary Beth will talk a little bit more about that later. So it'll be awesome. I love it. Okay. So you guys have all your goals and I love this. And so if we go to the next slide, we're going to talk about our why. And I see some of these whys, right? So, you know, why do you want to reach this goal? So, you know, some of those are to be active, to play with your kids or grandkids, to carry groceries in the house without, you know, getting tired or to reduce the risk of heart disease or diabetes. But I already see some of your whys, you know, Gail has a 50th birthday coming up and she wants to be healthier. Um, Leslie has, um, you know, Leslie wants to get stronger um, so she can go and, and keep trying different things. Um, I see all kinds of great whys. So making sure that you have that why is even, even better to make sure you get that, you know, you can go ahead and keep going when it feels like it's getting hard, right? So just making sure you find your why and then hold it really, really, really tight. And then we're gonna talk about baby steps. So we talked a little bit um, about breaking big goals down into manageable pieces. So that was a huge thing. Um, yes, this is a good why, Lee, because clutter is paralyzing and it makes you feel stressed. So we don't want stress, you have your why, definitely. So we're gonna break these goals down. Um, you know, when Mary Beth talked about this, um, the, the marathon, right? We're going to start small. Um, so even little baby things help. 
So making a few mini goals. So some of these are awesome, awesome mini goals. So, you know, trying to write three recipes a week to get to your big goal of a cookbook. There we go. That's a great mini goal. Um, maybe things to change your environment to make your, uh, to make things easier is a, is a mini goal. So um, for me, my goal <laughs> every day is to, when I'm at my office, I bring my gym clothes and my goal is by the end of the day, I've got to change over into my gym clothes. Once I'm dressed, I'm going to go exercise, but I hate getting dressed. It's, I, I don't know why it's not a thing. I don't love it, but um, you know, making that goal for me to always bring my gym bag. So that way I, you know, change clothes, drive back home and go and get some exercise. So, you know, whatever that change to your environment is. So maybe it's making, you know, if it's, you know, purchasing too much, maybe it's deleting your debit card from your Amazon account. Or, you know, if it's um, something surrounding, you know, healthy eating, you know, maybe buying yourself a new cookbook to make, to, to give yourself some inspiration. So whatever that little uh, mini goal is, but make it as small as you need it to be to get started. You know, as long as you have that desire in your heart to do some kind of behavior change, it can be as small as walking around the block. It does not have to be a whole marathon. And I think that that's a really, really great analogy. All right. Um, so we are going to go into some examples, especially about food and about exercise. And we're going to try to infuse some um, just background knowledge and education around those topics. So you feel more equipped to make these changes versus being swayed by what the internet says you should do or what your, what um, your family members or friends are trying. Um, so in the realm of like, I want to eat better, we wanted to talk about um, reading nutrition labels and eating more vegetables as some common um, kind of clean eating type of resolutions or goals. So labels it are like such a powerhouse of information that a lot of people don't take advantage of. Um, and part of it is that marketing teams do a great job of making things seem healthy that aren't healthy, like saying there's blah, 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 grams of whole grains, or it's all natural or all organic or uh, GMO free or whatever. And those aren't necessarily bad things in any right, but it's not there are plenty of things that fit that label that is not are not good for your heart or your waistline or are helping you reach my plate goals or just making you feel your best. It's um, and the truth is most of us, even if it's something with what we call like a health halo, like an organic granola bar made with honey and coconut oil or something like that, a lot of us are still getting too much sodium and too much added sugar and we're not getting enough fiber. And part of that is that people they throw multi-grain or whole wheat or something on it. And if it's not 100% whole wheat or you're not reading the actual numbers on the nutrition facts panel, it's hard to make those informed decisions just based on the front of a package. Um, so we wanted to really break down what the food label looks like now and what information you can get from it. And so you want to start from the top. And so you want to see what is a serving size. And a lot of people think that that's the recommended amount you should eat, but really it's like the company's best guess at what a normal portion would be. So some serving sizes have recently been increased because they realize no one only eats a half cup of ice cream. That you don't get four servings out of a pint, you get three servings out of a pint maybe. Or they used to make 20 ounce drink bottles and they would put the facts on the side for eight ounces. So people would like think it was only one thing and it was really two and a half times that. So they're trying to make it more accurate. But the truth is you can eat half a serving or double a serving. You just need to know what you're doing with that information. And so you wanna see what a serving size is so you can actually measure it or you can look at the proportion in the package. So you can see our example says eight servings per container. Um, and it tells you the number of calories per serving, which is kind of neutral. It's helpful information. If something is a snack that's um, like 400 calories or something, that would be pretty high. So like 100 or less is pretty low in calories, 400 or more is pretty high for a single item because a lot of us are following like an 1800 to 2200 range of calories. And so a lot of people, what's helpful is to think about, um, a lot of people do the three meals and two snacks kind of thing. So you might have three meals that are anywhere from 500 to 700 calories and two snacks that are anywhere from one to three, but it's just, there's different ways to make that work. So those are, I like to make them yellow in my descriptions because it's kind of neutral, um, but then the red, 
items are things that are on every nutrition label that you might want to look at and see if you can pick something that has a lower amount. So that would be saturated fat, which isn't the total fat. The total fat doesn't really matter as much to our health because um, we, we know there are heart healthy fats and not so heart healthy fats. So saturated fat and trans fats are the ones that are not so good for us. Um, sodium, we know a lot of people get too much of it and it leads to hypertension and heart disease over time. And then added sugars is one that is finally on most nutrition labels, which is very helpful because it's hard to discern from a, from a yogurt, for example, there's a significant amount of sugar. I mean, sugar from the, the milk naturally, but then if they added honey or jam or different things like that, um, that's going to increase the amount of added sugar. And so it helps you figure out how much was added and how much was just naturally there. Um, and then the things that are green are things that we don't necessarily get enough of as an American public. So fiber, we mentioned vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium. Um, and so that's, it's a lot of numbers, but the truth is all you really need to look at once you know the serving size are those percentages on the right-hand side. So that percent daily value, just 10, five, you can see those on the side. Um, and so there's something called the five and 20 rule. And so it's like my most favorite thing. It's like a magic like decoder ring. And once people know they can really make good informed decisions about the foods that they're choosing at the store. Um, but 5% is considered low and 20% is considered high. And a lot of things fall in the middle. And so you have to make judgment calls about that. But when you're looking at maybe breads, you want to look for something that has fiber that's closer to the 20% versus something that's closer to the 5% because you expect to get fiber from the bread you eat or the grain products that you eat. Um, but if you're looking at maybe a frozen meal or, um, I don't know, a can of soup or broth, broth is a huge one if you're looking at like cartons of broth at the store, you want to really look at that sodium percentage and like lunch meat and different things. Some things are just way higher than you would think, especially if you're going to eat two servings of that thing. And so being able to hold these up side by side and looking at which one's closer to that five or 10% mark can be really helpful. And so I, if we were together, I would have brought like a regular chicken broth or veggie broth, a reduced sodium and a low sodium, those all have real defined terms. Reduced sodium is like 33% less, but it's still way above 20% for one cup. Whereas a low sodium you could see was like three to 7%. And so just starting to look at those things and um, make those judgment calls can be very, very helpful. So you might use this knowledge of nutrition labels to aim to eat less sodium. So all Americans are instructed to have less than 2,300 milligrams per day, and that's what the percentages are based on. Um, but the American Heart Association actually recommends less of 1,500 milligrams per day. And the truth is most sodium is hidden. It's not what we add when we cook. It's not what we add with our salt shaker. Um, it's already in our restaurant food because they're really just, they're concerned about you having a pleasurable experience. And salt is one of those things that kind of hits those um, sensors and makes things taste better. Um, but frozen and boxed foods that are prefab also have quite a lot of sodium in them. So it's not to say that you can never have them, but maybe you have your lean cuisine and you try to only have it two or three times a week. And then you add a side that's lower sodium, like a piece of fruit or a frozen vegetable that doesn't have a sauce on it. Or, I mean, you can add some flavoring of your own, but not a sauced vegetable or a canned vegetable that has salt. Um, and the truth is your taste buds will actually get used to less salt in two to three weeks. And so if you kind of bring it down, you'll get used to it. And then really salty things will taste saltier to you. So we have a handout to show you how you can kind of systematically reduce that salt over time by focusing on different types of products that you might be eating. Um, another one that a lot of people can look at is the added sugar, like we said. Um, and if you look at the green words, those are all um, different words for sugar, or types of sugars that you might see on the ingredients label. So that list of ingredients. And so if you're not aware, the ingredients are listed from the most to the least in, a, in something. So if you're buying something and it's not a dessert and like sugar is the first ingredient, you, that might give you pause or if it has like four different types of sweetener or something like that. But as, in fa as far as what nutrition educators and experts say, it's kind of like sugar is sugar is sugar. There's a health halo around honey and kind of a demonization of corn syrup, but they're both four calories per gram. And so it doesn't necessarily matter to a nutritionist 
which one is in your granola bar, it's which one has less added sugar overall. So we're supposed to keep that to 10% or less of our daily calories, which is about 200 calories made from, um, from sugar. So a can of soda is like that complete, is like 40 grams right there. Um, but we wanted to share these examples of surprising sources of hidden sugar. So it's things that we wouldn't think about that quickly add up because they have about 20% or more of your, your sugar for the day. And so pasta sauces can have six to 12 grams per half cup. Granola bars can have eight to 12 grams. Yogurt can be huge. So I usually, if I'm going to buy vanilla yogurt, I will do um, like I'll buy plain and I'll buy vanilla and mix them together or the same with the flavor, or I'll add my own like low sugar jam or my own toppings. Like I'll add vanilla and some sugar or vanilla or some Splenda to that. Um, instant flavored oatmeal has a lot of sugar automatically. Salad dressing can, and then surprisingly coleslaw as well. So it'll be really interesting as you start looking at the products that you buy, just to see if there are simple swaps you can make or reduce the amount or the frequency in which you have them. So it's not to say that you can't have things with sugar, it's just having them fit into your eating patterns. So um, one smart goal or a mini goal might be, I will make one healthy swap at the grocery store this week after comparing labels. I know a lot of people, a lot of like health gurus will tell you that you need to do like a clean pantry sweep. And that is one approach, but in terms of it being a long-term sustainable approach, unless you had a health scare and you are ready to go and you are motivated and you have those scaffolds around you, you're probably going to go buy those foods again. So maybe you stop buying things, certain things, um, and maybe you throw out some things, but a sustainable habit to build would be, okay, the cereals that I buy or the granola bars that I keep in my purse or whatever that might be, have a lot of sugar or have more sodium than I would like. I'm going to try a different one and see if I can sub this into my eating pattern. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions about that? So the next thing that a lot of people want to do when they want to eat healthy or eat clean or get fit, um, one way to think about this might be, I'm going to try to eat more vegetables and make a smart goal around that. And you could do fruit as well. Um, but the truth is, um, I think at least half or close to half of Americans get enough fruit in a day, but less than 10% of Americans get enough vegetables. So if you focus on vegetables, you could get a lot of nutritional bang for your buck. And the truth is they're pretty low calorie on their own and they're very filling. So if you're trying to lose weight, um, but you also don't want to be hungry. And I hate being hungry. I want to eat like a volumetrically large amount of food and also fit in my pants. And so like I eat a lot of vegetables because it reaches both those goals at the same time. Um, but just to give you an idea of what the amount of fruit or and uh, <laughs> fruit and vegetables we're supposed to get in a day if you are on a 2000 calorie eating pattern would be two cups of fruit and two and a half cups of vegetables. So we're going to show you um, some examples of that pictorially on the next slide, but we want you to be sure to understand that all forms count. And so a lot of people think if it's not fresh, I'm doing myself a disservice. I'm doing my kids a disservice. I'm not doing what I need to be doing. But the truth is um, frozen and canned are budget friendly and very nutritious options. Um, frozen vegetables are, there's actually been studies that show that if you go grocery shopping once a week, which my, most of us do, um, especially during a pandemic, we might even go even less frequently than that. The fresh vegetables in your crisper drawer are slightly degrading in terms of amount of nutrients over time. Not enough that you need to be super concerned, but in contrast, frozen vegetables are picked and within a few hours are frozen. So their nutrients are literally frozen in time. So as long as you're picking ones that don't have too much um, added seasonings and things like that, it's a pretty amazing, easy way to add lots of vegetables to your diet. Um, canned um, vegetables are fine. We just really recommend that you try to get the no salt added as much as you can, but if you don't have those, or if you have a whole pantry that's stocked, we don't want you to throw it out, but if you strain them, you can actually um, get about a third of the salt off by rinsing. And so I have, there are a few vegetables I keep canned pretty frequently. Um, that would be like corn, tomatoes, and beans. And I find that really helpful. But I when I can, I try to get the no salt added because if you think about making like a taco soup, if I added tomatoes, corn, and beans that all had were the regular 
um, label, they probably all have 10 to 12% of my salt for the day, even before the broth. And so just the vegetables had like 30% of my salt for the day and I didn't even notice it. Um, dried and juiced are also good options. I, I actually sometimes really enjoy dried fruit versus fresh fruit for some reason, but I wanted to give you some equivalences there um, that half a cup of dried fruit is the equivalent of one cup of fresh fruit. And these measurements are based on fresh fruit because if you think about it, all the sugar, all the fiber, all the vitamins are still there. They just took the water out. So the volume is gonna be compact. Um, and then kind of the other way is that salad greens have a lot of uh, air in between them. You don't have like a compressed salad. There's, it's tossed and nice. And so when you're measuring salad, two cups of salad greens actually is one cup of vegetables. So we just wanted to give you those equivalences so you have a good idea and juice um, you get lots of different headlines about juice. It is a, a decent source, but there's usually, it's all natural sugar, but the fiber is usually removed. So it hits your bloodstream just as quickly as a soda would. And sometimes the amount of sugar is very similar as well. So it's one of those things that if you want to have juice, um, you can, but I wouldn't get more than one serving per day. And I probably wouldn't try to get a serving every day from juice. Do you have something to add, Adriana? Just that when you're looking at juice, you know, those labels, just like the labels, you know, we were talking about from before, you want to make sure you're looking for something that on the back, you swivel it around, you're looking for 100% juice. You're not looking for, you know, juice cocktail, because some of those have added sugars and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So you got to be careful with juice, but it's delicious. <laughs> I'm a juice girl, but, um, yeah. you know, definitely you're missing out on that fiber. So it's just a, an every now and then kind of thing. Yeah. And one of the things I really like to do sometimes just for a little special um, drink that's a little different is to drink like four ounces of juice, but top it off with like a sparkling water or a seltzer. So it makes a little spritzer that is sweetened with real juice versus something else. So that's something I make if I have to kind of serve a crowd and I don't want to just give them water, especially like the kids that I teach for 4-H and stuff like that. Um, so here's a picture of what it would look like to meet those goals for the whole day. So obviously you're, you're not gonna sit down and eat every one of these things at once, but you can imagine how maybe you have a nectarine with your lunch and you have a half cup of dried cherries um, in the afternoon, maybe with a handful of nuts for your snack or a cheese stick or something like that. And then vegetables, you can see one cup of sliced cucumbers, a half cup of baby carrots with some dip and one cup of sauteed kale. So you might have one of those with lunch, one of those with dinner, one of those with snack, and suddenly you've met the goal and you can see how that would have filled you up. So our, our biggest goal is to help people not wait until dinner to try to get all their vegetables in. It is possible. Some people like eating those giant salads that have like five cups of lettuce in them or this, I buy the um, like saute vegetables in a bag when they're on sale. Um, and I, I'd probably eat two, if not three servings of that. So it's one of those things where you can always eat more, but the baseline is kind of what's pictured right here. And it's really hard to meet if you're not at least getting it with lunch and dinner and maybe thinking about getting it in with a snack as well. So my favorite thing is trying to get people to um, try vegetables in new ways. So you can see at the bottom are all pictures that I've served children at the library and their parents who also might have been picky eaters as well. Um, so one way you can make vegetables more fun and appealing are to serve with different dipping sauces or cut them in different ways. So you can see in the bottom on the red plate, that's all yellow like summer squash so that you can eat raw that I cut into sticks and chips and crinkle fries. And we dip them in everything from hummus to pesto to ranch dressing to even like marinara sauce. That, that taste combo is surprisingly good. So don't knock it till you try it. Um, roasting is kind of a magical thing. A good formula is 425 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the vegetable. And you want to get your chunks as uniformly as possible. And I usually add like a tablespoon of oil for every like four cups of vegetables or so and maybe a half teaspoon of salt and pepper but if it's it's one of those things that if you grew up eating them boiled um, and you think you don't like a vegetable trying it roasted is probably your best bet at seeing if maybe you were wrong so i roasted some cabbage here at the bottom um, and i've had a lot of parents say i was surprised how good that was um, another thing is getting it in at breakfast if you do that at even if it's just like every other week you have a veggie omelet or a smoothie with some spinach in it, every little bit of addition helps. And so certain vegetables taste like nothing. Um, if you have like blueberries in your smoothie, you can't even see the spinach, but some people do like having that green smoothie like health feel. Um, but there are lots of ways to combine eggs with vegetables and things like that um, to be really healthy and tasty. Um, you can also just add, 
if you can, if you're cooking, just add more than what it says. So throw a handful of spinach or whenever I make spaghetti, my husband knows it's going to have onions and peppers and mushrooms in it. And if I don't want to cut those, they sell those frozen too. So I will just throw them in and saute it with the sauce or even microwave it with the sauce and call it a day. Um, there are ways to sub part of your meat um, for a vegetable. So mushrooms are really great for this and onions and maybe even carrots. If you dice it really small and it has a seasoning or a sauce on it or it's in a patty, you can't always tell that it's not all beef. So that's helping or turkey or whatever. So that's helping your vegetable intake as well as your wallet for reducing the amount of meat that you're eating. Um, you can swipe out, swap out carbs and do half and half like a cauliflower rice or spaghetti squash or zoodles. We've actually, I've made noodles out of sweet potatoes and yellow squash as well. And they're both really tasty. Um, with spaghetti sauce or other seasonings. And I'm not here to say that I think that um, regular rice or brown rice or pasta is bad. It's just a way to switch things up, get more vegetables, or if you're like me, eat more garlic bread and have nothing change. So that's my motivation there. I'm just adding a few more to the things that they would go with like stir fries or soups. I'm looking for new and fresh salad combos. So this is a picture in the background of a cucumber and watermelon salad that I made for one of my programs that was very popular. And a lot of the recipes say like use one cucumber for like half a watermelon. And I was like, what would happen if I made it 50-50, um, like the same volume, like four cups and four cups and it worked great. Um, but they have so many different bag salads now that if you're in a rush, like if I forgot my lunch, I don't go get fast food. I go to Kroger and get that like salad bag and like some chicken or some um, tuna or something to eat with it. And so I try not to use the whole salad, the, the dressing packet, because it is um, pretty high in saturated fat and sodium. But there are lots of ways to get inspiration for I don't I don't want to eat the same garden salad over and over. Um, and then just having them on hand is part of the battle too. So stocking up on frozen vegetables, and even occasionally those fun dupes like broccoli or cauliflower tots or things. I'm not here to say you should eat that every day as your vegetable. But it's a fun shift every once in a while. So maybe your smart goal or your mini goal is I'm going to add an extra vegetable or fruit to lunch at least three days this week or something like that. So you can see where it's a tangible thing. It's a behavior that's easy to measure. And it's like, I'm going to do it this week. And maybe next week I, I repeat it or something like that. Okay. All right. So another common resolution that we talked about is going to be get fit, right? So get fit super broad. I don't know what that means. You know, if I say I'm going to get fit, what am I going to do? What am I going to fit? I don't know. So when we talk about getting fit, you know, we want to try to break that down, right? So maybe it's walking for 20 minutes every day, maybe during a lunch break or after work. Maybe it's trying a new online fitness class this month. Um, I've been trying some really cool new fun dance classes online. You know, it just kind of keeps you excited moving, you know, um, and especially if somebody, if, you know, is like me who loves classes and, you know, fun things with other people, it kind of gives you that same feel. Um, or, you know, even um, a physical goal, like about weight. So maybe trying to lose a half to two pounds a week. So that's about all we say, you know, is about a normal healthy range of weight loss, you know, two pounds and under if you're trying to lose weight, you know, anything kind of over two pounds is, you know, it's normal, it can be fine, you know, but if it happens, you know, consistently, it might be something to check in with your doctor about or check in about some different things, um, maybe changing some of that exercise or diet. So, Getting more active, right? It sounds like a chore. When I think here, exercise, it's like, ugh, I don't know, I don't think I want to. But, you know, activity is something fun. It's delightful. It's, you know, moving your body in, in all kinds of great ways. So the standard um, of, of our goal um, for Americans is 30 minutes of moderate intensity activity at least five days a week. So, you know, moderate activity is, you know, we're going to kind of give some good examples, but you kind of want to get that heart rate up just a little bit. We don't have to break a sweat, but, you know, just a little bit. Um, so you can divide that, though. So it doesn't have to be, I'm going to do an hour today at the gym, or I'm going to do a 30-minute walk right now. You know, you can divide it up into 10 to 15 minutes. So, you know, I'm gonna take a 10 minute walk in the morning, I'm gonna take a 10 minute walk after work and I'm gonna take a 10 minute walk with the dog, you know, right before dinner. Um, so, you know, breaking it up, 
right? Um, and you can work it up gradually if you wanna do something like 20, 30 minutes at a time, or if you don't, if you like breaking it up, if it works for your schedule, keep it that way. Um, but then also find something that you enjoy, right? Find something that, you know, you like. If you don't wanna run, you don't have to run, I promise. Um, if, you know, you don't know how to ride a bike, you, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. You can find all kinds of different things. Um, and then also having contingency plans, contingency plans for bad weather, for, you know, you have to drive somebody somewhere, you know, have those kind of contingency plans in place. So we're going to talk about that. So modern activities, um, you know, brisk walking. So um, one of the ways that, you know, you can kind of think about brisk walking is I can hold a conversation, but it might be a little, you might, if I'm on the phone, you might hear me kind of, <sighs> puffing and puffing a little bit, right? So a brisk walk. Um, cleaning your house. We all know that that makes us, you know, warm. We're getting moving. We're getting stuff done. Or lawn care. So, you know, if you have um, an electric mower that's a push mower, you know, getting that stuff, you know, cleaning, raking leaves, you know, digging, anything like that, it's going to be kind of moderate exercise. Um, gardening is fun and a great way to get outside and, or inside if you're like me and you have a tiny little apartment garden, which doesn't grow well at all. But, um, you know, inside gardening, you know, you get up, you get down, you're, you know, kind of, you know, making sure you're moving around, cycling, walking while you're playing golf, you know, um, even fun things like racket sports, um, you know, tennis, badminton, or dancing. Dancing's my exercise. Um, but all kinds of different things, you know, you can find that moderate activity. Um, it's cold. I'm freezing. Um, it's very cold outside. I'm always very cold. Um, this is, you know, all kinds of things you can do in the cold, you know, you can still go outside. Um, you know, you just want to make sure that you're safe, you know, that you're okay, you know, that if, you know, it happens to get dark, other people can kind of see you. So you want to make sure that you're dressing though for that cold weather. So, you know, um, this is going to sound crazy. I never thought about ever wearing hats or gloves for a walk until I met Mary Beth from up north where it's totally normal to do something like that. And I was like, wow, okay, I can do that too. <laughs> It just never dawned on me living down here. It's just like, oh, it's cold, you stay inside. Um, but, you know, you can make sure, you know, you've got your layers. So if you get too warm, you can kind of take something off. You know, you've got all kinds of things. Make sure that your shoes and socks are okay in case, you know, it's cold. So it's still kind of wet sometimes. So, you know, you don't want to get anything outside, you know, get any kind of wet socks or maybe find something that you like to do specifically in the cold or more if you're like me. I you want to stay inside anyway um, because you pay for that heat. So um, you just do indoor workouts, right? So maybe an indoor circuit workout, you know, maybe you're doing yoga, a virtual class, a YouTube workout, all kinds of great things. Um, or even just extra housework. Maybe this is the time. But, you know, there's always, you know, something you can do to work out even in the cold weather. So some of those mini goals, you know, keep that gym bag, you know, in your car or walking shoes at your desk. If somewhere in here are my sneakers. Um, so, you know, I can just kind of slip them off. Um, I usually also wear sneakers, so it's not a big deal. But if I'm wearing heels for a meeting, I can just move my sneakers on and go outside for a walk. Um, keeping them at my desk or keeping a gym bag in your car or somewhere where it's easy access for you. Um, buy a glove, buy gloves, buy a hat. So it's okay to go outside or, you know, if it's hot outside, maybe buy a sun hat. So you don't feel like, you know, you're going to get sunburn or things like that. So making sure you've got those tools and then to have that mini goal, right? Have that smart goal of walking maybe 10 to 15 minutes at my lunch, uh, break three times a week. All right. So we got to talk about all kinds of great things today. So, we talked about, you know, if we set SMART goals, we can get healthier. Um, and that works for any kind of goal. We had some awesome goals surrounding hobbies, surrounding, um, you know, cookbooks, surrounding, um, you know, being more passionate. Like there are so many goals that this applies to, right? So we can figure that out. Um, we wanna break down those behaviors um, and make them into small baby habits, small mini goals, so that we, we can tackle one and then move on and then have contingency plans. You know, what if something doesn't work? What if I forget my lunch at home? What can I do? You know, what if I don't have the right sneakers or it's raining? What can I do from there? So having a contingency plan 
And then remembering that Rome wasn't built in a day. It's okay if, you know, you have a plan and you mess up a little bit, you know, that's all right. You know, you get back up, you try something else, or if it doesn't work for you, it's okay. I won't tell anybody if you scrap it and you start over and you find a goal that does work better for you, right? So maybe you thought you wanted to be a runner. You tried it for a few weeks. You did not like being a runner. That's okay. Maybe you want to, you know, do cycling. Maybe you want to try gardening, you know? It's okay to, you know, do things that you enjoy and find different things. And, you know, it takes time. And it's going to, it's, that's why they're New Year's resolutions. You have a whole year. So we'll take all the time we need for it. And like we mentioned before, like, it's great to have big goals. It just helps you having those check marks along the way. Um, Crap, I had another thought, but I can't remember. I think I I know what you mean. I mean, I love, you know, if you have, like, that makes sense. Because if you, if I have a big goal and I don't see anything, I'm going to give up. But if I have a small goal or if I get to like my to-do list, if I get to check things off all day, oh, it feels so satisfying. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep trying. I love it. And like you've, you've made progress in some way. Like that first statistic said that like 90% of people who feel like they have forward motion have created some kind of goal along the way. And even if you don't reach the first goal you started with, you made progress that you wouldn't have made had you not set that intention. It's- Exactly. Exactly. All right. So as we wrap up, you know, we're coming to a close. Uh, We're getting close to one. Um, But I want you guys to, you know, enjoy to practice. Um, So we can, we talked about, you know, all of these goals. Um, We've made some of these goals smart. So if you, you know, have any more things that you want to change to a goal, um, you're welcome to, um, you know, look at them and personalize them and let us know what, you know, comes of it. So we'd be yes. super duper excited to see how that works out. Yes, um, Mary Beth, you want to talk about prizes? You? Yeah, um, if we can help you at all, I just want to be respectful of everyone's time. We exactly. can stay on after. You can email us. If you succeed in your goals, we'd love to know about it. Um, our we email do. will be on the last slide. I want to see um, this cookbook, guys. <laughs> yes. Um, so we do have a very short evaluation. I know that Miss um, Gail has been with us every time, I'm pretty sure, or nearly every time. So we have a prize that I will get to you for sure. We've kind of, I fell down on the job of doing my little raffles. Um, but it just means a lot to us to know how we can make our programs better, what you're looking for, what you got out of it, all that type of stuff. So I put the link in the chat and the program name will be Healthy Habits. And then today's the 28th. Um, But if you put in something else, we'll be able to find it. And I will include this in the follow-up email. But um, we, the survey doesn't explicitly ask you for your email. And so either let me know that you filled it out or try to just type it in one of the text box responses. That would be perfect um, for us. And then you want to explain Living Well Rockdale real quick? Yeah, so if you're not tired of seeing our faces by now, um, you can come find us at Living Well Rockdale. We're really excited. We're being able to partner with the chamber, with the hospital, um, with the coalition, uh, and we hope to really keep expanding to be able to provide um, all kinds of great information to you about what's going on in Rockdale, about all of the great opportunities that we have here for exercise, for, um, you know, uh, healthy eating, for healthy habits, and to learn a little bit more. Um, So please, please, please um, give us a quick shout out, a follow on Instagram or um, on Facebook at Living Well Rockdale. Um, And um, thank you guys to be great on on the Zooms. I'm so excited. Um, Or to um, go ahead. Oh, real, real quick. Go back real fast. Okay. 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 No, you're fine. Um, To sign up for the newsletter at tinyurl.com slash LWR news. So we hope to see you soon. Um, We'll send out a a mostly monthly newsletter about all kinds of different things to give you more tips when you're not hanging out with us here. I put the um, that link in the chat sign up for the newsletter. That's the January one. And then we are doing this every fourth Thursday, unless it's like on a holiday and we'll give you plenty of notice, but we're going to do a more like food centric one um, next time about heart smart cooking um, and 
Piedmont Rockdale is also doing um, chamber lunch and learns on the second Tuesday. So they're doing like clinical side. So a doctor, hopefully a very personable doctor will be giving some advice very on heart health simple. there. And then we'll step in with some kind of lifestyle type of thing. So those are the dates. Um, I believe that the Piedmont one should come to your, if you're receiving chamber emails, you'll just get a link from there. Um, but you can use the same link to sign up for the February one for us. And we have the future yeah. dates on there as well. And then Adriana is a workplace wellness guru. And so she is having a healthy workplace wellness kind of info session workshop on the 16th of February at 10 a.m. So that's not a lunch one. And so this is more kind of, it's for people who can, who want to make positive change in their whole organization, right? It's not necessarily one person learning what I can do on my lunch break. It's how I can make my whole workplace healthier and either be an advocate and talk to the powers that be, or I am the powers that be. Yeah, definitely, definitely. If it's something that you're interested in, um, we'll talk about workplace wellness programs, how that can affect, you know, you, your employees, or, you know, if you want to talk to leadership about it, it's awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. I promise we'll have fun. It won't be just numbers. Yes. So those are our two email addresses. If you want to follow up with us, um, you can stay on the line if you would like to. Um, and I have a few handouts that I will email you. So I'm going to do a new share so you can see those if I can find the window. New share. Um, so I think I'm probably covering part of it with this, but um, good. we have one. Ooh, I'm not trying to, I promise I can do some things with technology. Um, one about shaping habits, seven tips for that. Um, we have um, small steps for increasing physical activity. Um, we have that same cool weather workouts one. Um, this is the one I was talking about with the salty six, focusing on breads and rolls, basically sandwich items in your first week and building on that. Um, we have one about added sugars and reading labels. Um, this is kind of the step-by-step -step of reading labels. And it says it's for kids, but I think it's the best handout out there. So don't feel like you're being patronized too, please. Um, one about smart snacks and ideas for that, um, building a healthy meal, livening up your meals with fruits and vegetables, and then we have one that's a pantry list, and a really cool one for um, goal setting for health goals. So we will get those to you as soon as we can. So I'm going to stop the recording, but thank you all for coming and spending time with us.